Hello there and welcome once again to Red Gaming Tech for your daily dose of the latest gaming news as of the 10th of June. Today I'm bringing you, well, what else would it be except for the latest E3 2013 news and this video is going to be a roundup of all the Xbox One information that has been released so far, or the Microsoft related information as well. There's been quite a lot of Xbox One related information revealed so far at E3. I would imagine that there's quite a bit more yet to come as of course E3 is only just getting started with many days and hours yet to go before well several people even start their conference and so forth so I'm going to bring you what we know so far but do keep your eyes peeled for further updates as we will keep to try our best to keep on top of everything now the first thing I'm going to start off with is probably the juice one of the juiciest piece of news concerning the Xbox one as Microsoft have officially confirmed a release window as well as a price and as for the release window, we have November 2013 in 21 markets, although there is no exact date. We at least know the time frame. It's pretty much the same time frame that was given for the PS4. And as for the price, we have a price of £429, $499 or €499, Euros. so about the price that we were expecting and about the price that had been predicted by various analysts in the run-up to E3. Now I would imagine that the PS4 will be confirmed for this kind of price tag, maybe a little less, but I would expect it to be around the £400 mark still, and I guess around the $500 mark for the PS4. I'd be very surprised if it's much less than that. I know there's some predictions that we'll be releasing for about $349 or something like that, I think it was. But to be honest, I don't see Sony releasing it that cheap just because of the cost of the components. But of course, this is all speculation. that They haven't even started their conference yet. I believe that starts at 2 a.m. UK time. So of course, we'll be catching up to that news tomorrow. But still, that's not all I have for you for the Xbox One. I've got quite a few game confirmations as of course Microsoft did promise 20 games that were shown on E3 so of course there will be even more information incoming. But the first game that has been confirmed for the Xbox One is Minecraft which is very very cool indeed and a brief trailer was shown which promised a bigger world and more multiplayer but unfortunately no other information was given other than that. I do wonder what they mean by bigger worlds, if they literally mean a bigger world that you spawn in or what have you, if even more changes are being worked on by Notch and his crew, I don't know. They have literally given no information other than what I've shown you. Hopefully there'll be some screenshots really soon, but as of yet, there's not really much, which is a little bit unfortunate, but of course this is all fresh uh, new news. Anyway, uh, the next game that has been confirmed is actually an exclusive title for the Xbox One, and that is Dead Rising 3. And that is, of course, being worked on by Capcom Vancouver. And it will be featuring an open world which is crammed with zombies, which apparently no load times as data is pulled in from the cloud. As well as blanketing the world with hundreds of customized weapons, players can also command vehicles, GTA style, calling and calling airstrikes, excuse me, via the smart glass. And you will take control of Nick Ramos in the crestfallen city of Los Perdidos three days after a zombie outbreak, and it will be available this holiday, as I said, exclusively for the Xbox One. Now I want to talk about something just for a minute before I move on to the next piece of news concerning the Xbox One. And it's how it mentions the lack of lag due to data being pulled in from the cloud. Now of course it has been confirmed that it's down to the developer whether they use the online features or allow you to trade in etc. And it sounds like that Dead Rising 3 is going to have that functionality being used as of course it is utilizing the cloud to lessen the amount of load on the actual console because of the amount of data that's being stored. Now whether or not you'll be able to play it without using the cloud I don't know obviously this has literally just been revealed so I can't say. From the wording though it sounds like it is going to rely on the cloud as in if you don't want to be connected to the internet then you can't play this game but of course that's purely speculation guys. Please don't quote me on this. I'm sure we'll get some confirmation or denial of that very, very soon, but they haven't said anything yet. All I've got is what I've said to you already. It just seems like that's where they're heading with the wording that they've used there. Anyway, there's also quite a big game confirmed for the Xbox One, which is Halo 5, and will be coming to the Xbox One in 2013. 
and 343 Industries Bonnie Ross took the stage to confirm the new game, announced that the show only has Halo, which will be enhanced by cloud computing and make use of dedicated servers. And she also promised, and I quote, for the first time on console, a Halo experience that runs at a blistering 60 frames per second. And in a press release, Microsoft does refer to the game as Halo Xbox One and teases the next chapter of the award-winning Xbox franchise developed by 343 Industries that will take you on a new journey in the Halo universe. And there was a trailer released, um, which you guys can check out in the description. I'll put a link down below as I don't want to show it in the video due to copyright reasons. So I don't think this is really surprising anyone. Uh, especially with the confirmation of the Halo series. Um, you know, Halo is one of their biggest franchises and it makes perfect sense that they would want Halo on the launch lineup, of course. This won't be on the launch lineup, but it will be very, very soon after by the sounds of it. But of course, we won't actually know the actual release date. All we've got is 2013. But even if it doesn't come out till late next year, it still makes sense to have such a huge franchise coming out for your next-gen console because, well, it may just get a few people to buy it because, oh, you know, they, they want to play the next-gen Halo, which is fair enough. And it's quite cool that they will actually be having 60 frames a second. Now, as someone who's more used to PC gaming nowadays, that's kind of like, well, lol, where have you been? But, of course, for console, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, it's been capped at 30 for a long, long time, many years now. We've been pretty much stuck at 30 FPS for console games. So we'll be curious to see as to not only the graphics of Halo 5, but how it looks running at a faster frame rate. Now that we've got the games out of the way and of course the big news of the release window and price, I've got some slightly smaller pieces of news concerning the Xbox One. Uh, and that's Twitch streaming is built into the console as they have announced a partnership with Twitch.tv, that's of course Microsoft, and Twitch CEO Emmett Shear had this to say. Live broadcasting has continued to grow in popularity, but sharing your console experience has never been this easy. Xbox Live Gold is enabling the ability to both upload your gameplay directly to Twitch and to stream Twitch content on the Xbox One. The impact of this level of console integration will be a true game changer. So it seems like that's a pretty cool feature, I'm not going to lie, that's pretty nice that it's built in to, because to stream from a console, well, it's kind of a pain at the moment at least. So it's nice to have that functionality, functionality excuse me, built in. However, it does sound as if it's an Xbox Live Gold account exclusive. And I would imagine that Silver account holders would be able to watch streams, um, but they probably wouldn't be able to stream themselves, although the wording does kind of lead me to think maybe both is locked completely to Silver users, but of course, we don't know. It seems like it from the wording, but I could just be misreading it, but it definitely seems like the ability to stream is exclusive to Xbox Live Gold. And finally for this Xbox One roundup and of course I will be bringing you more news because I'm sure there's loads more yet to come and they have confirmed that Microsoft points are being axed and they will be and and they have confirmed that real money currency will be replacing the virtual currency that they've been using up until now which is so so good I mean it's been rumored for a while now that this was going to be happening uh, and it pretty much been well I was taking it as fact that this has already happened but of course it hadn't actually been officially confirmed by Microsoft or denied uh, which is usually the way with Microsoft but of course you know they're very closed mouths on this sort of thing anyway it seems like it's very much true real money currency finally on the next gen Xbox um, I'm sure many of you are glad to see the back of those Microsoft points as that was a whole pain in the arse. Anyway, that's me done for this roundup of the Xbox One news so far at E3 2013. Keep your eyes peeled here at Red Gaming Tech as we will be bringing you the latest gaming news. Of course, all from E3 2013. Um, there's yet more news incoming. Of course, many people have yet to even begin. Uh, their conferences yet of course sony as I said not until 2 a.m this morning so do keep your eyes peeled as we will bring you the news right here anyway as i said that's me done thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time